Uh, I'll start off and, and provide a general update on a number of uh, on a number of topics. Uh, first, in terms of the roster and injury update, I'll start with that. Um, we've got Mikhail Abramov with a back injury. Obviously, did not participate at the prospect tournament in Traverse City and is uh, not participating in training camp. Joseph Wall uh, continuing to recover from a shoulder operation that he had at the end of last year, as everybody knows, uh, continuing to progress well. Um, will be reevaluated later in the fall in regards to a timeline for return. Uh, we've got Pierre Engvall, uh, will not be participating at the start of camp, uh, sustained a ankle and foot injury in training in Sweden. Uh, he'll be reevaluated the week of October the 3rd, um, and uh, we'll have a further update at that time. Uh, we're hopeful that, uh, that Pierre will be cleared at that time and will be uh, able to get into the final group of exhibition games, but we've got to do what's best for his long term. Uh, and so we'll have a further update that week of October the 3rd. Uh, and then we have Timothy Lilligren. Uh, Timothy sustained a, um, a hernia um, that, uh, that was diagnosed upon arrival here. Had an operation on Friday, uh, went successfully. He'll be out a minimum of six weeks, so we're looking at a... Um, early to mid-November projected return if everything goes well. Uh, so that is the injury and roster update to start. Uh, other absentees, we have Rasmus Sandin not present today. I think as everybody is uh, well aware, expecting, um, and uh, as, as I said to Luke Fox uh, when he reached out about it in the summer after speaking to Louis Gross, um, I don't think that commenting on the state of affairs benefits the player as much as everybody would probably like public discourse on it. Um, he's an important young player for us and we hope to have him here as soon as possible is all I'll say. Um, with regards to my personal situation, uh, I know that it's been a topic uh, of conversation the last week or so as expected. Uh, I'll speak about it here today and then I'm not going to take any questions about it or discuss it until after the season. Uh, it's just my personal choice and, and that of our family. What I'll say uh, on it is that we're an organization that preaches accountability and in my position I don't view myself as any different. In fact, I believe I have to be held the most accountable. Uh, with that said, I fully expect to be judged on the full body of my work over the five-year term of my contract and I have zero issue with being evaluated over the uh, entire body uh, of work here. Uh, I have full belief in our players, in our staff, in our group, and that we're going to have a great season. Um, and my focus every single day will be on continuing to support them, uh, continuing to make the decisions that put the team in the best position in the short and the long run. And I think anybody that uh, truly knows me or that it's ever worked with me knows that um, that's all I'll do every single day is pour everything I have into, into doing what's right for the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, and setting the team, uh, continuing to set the team up for success in the short and long run. Um, with re on that note, with regards to the season ahead, um, we're extremely excited. It's another chance for us to change the story. And um, I know that uh, nobody wants to hear what we have to say. They want to see what we do uh, in action. And I know that uh, a lot of people will want to say that that is going to have to come in the playoffs, uh, which obviously we agree. We, we need to be better. We need to win come that time. We're capable of doing so, but we will not, uh, given the improvements of other teams in our division and, and the fact that it is a very uh, difficult division with perennial contenders in it, uh, we have to go through every single day starting today and, and ready ourselves to be in the best chance come playoff time. We can't just skip past it and get to that point as much as everyone would like us to get there and judge us on that. We know that's how we're going to be judged. But this next uh, several uh, days, weeks, and months is about getting us ready to get there, qualify, and then put ourselves in a position to, uh, to deliver what we're capable of um, in this season. So um, with regards to the roster, we're very excited about it, obviously, in, in this uh, current uh, last number of years. Every team that's in, in our position and, and considering themselves a contender is going to lose players year to year. Uh, what we try to do every single year is find a way to replace the very good players that we lose in free agency. Uh, and, and we're very excited about the depth that we have uh, at forward and on D. And uh, obviously we've got a notable change in goal that we're very, very excited about both uh, Matt and Ilya Samsonov and also Eric Shelgren and then Joe Wall when he gets back all four um, have played. Obviously, Matt and, and Eric are uh, younger goaltenders that uh, came up last year and played well for us. So I've got a lot of faith in our goaltending department. I've got a lot of faith in, in the goaltenders themselves, and, and we're excited about the season 
uh, and excited to get rolling today. So uh, on that note, I'll turn it over and, and uh, answer any questions anyone may have. You talked about the belief you have in the organization, the belief you have in the group. The division's gotten better. There's question marks. So where does that belief come from, knowing all the improvements that have made and the question marks that you do have? I think every team is going to have question marks in this current uh, in the current situation. I don't I don't think that there are any perfect teams. Some have, have proven it more recently than others. They can go all the way. But um, for me, where my belief comes from, Josh, is just being around the group every day. The, the guys have been in the facility mostly for, for quite a while now, the core group, seeing how hard they work, seeing what they're about, and really everything that they are doing right now is about winning. When the group was younger, I think you're trying to establish yourself and um, you're trying to prove that you belong, and now they're trying to prove together that they can win. And I, I see it every day. I, I don't expect people to hear that and believe it. They're going to want us to show it, and, and that's 100% acceptable and fine, uh, but I see what the group is about every day and that's why I, I have full, full belief in them, not just the players, but the people who are in the building. It's a, it's a great place to come into every day in a great environment and um, we just have to win in the end to have everyone else uh, know that and I understand why people would question it. Um, Kyle, just to go back to your own personal situation, it. it you sound very confident in your own abilities, and I get that, but can you explain why, again, you have decided not to sign an extension until the end of the season, if, even if that is on the table? Uh, for me, I, I just think that in the end it's best. I, I don't obviously decide what the organization wants to do, Kevin, so I only control my own... Um, I only control what I can do each day, and my view of it is that if we have the year that we're capable of and the team plays uh, the way that it's capable of and, and executes on it at the end, which is everything that we're building towards, my situation will get taken care of without issue. And I, I, don't, I don't worry about it. Um, you know, I, I, I have more confidence. My, my confidence, I don't want to come across as it's in myself. My confidence is in the group of people that we have here, the players, the staff, and in all facets, because I think it's a special group. Um, and so that's where, that's where I'm... I'm be more than happy to go through the year and be evaluated on the year and then have the decision made because I believe in, in our group and, and uh, know what we're capable of. So you're obviously not worried that your own status is going to be a distraction in the same way that a player, a star player, not having signed an extension would be an ex a distraction? I, I know it won't be a distraction because I, I won't let it be a distraction. Kyle, with the absence of Rasmus, Timothy, and Pierre, who specifically are you looking at to jump up and fill those roles? Well, I think on defense, we, we, every year we go into our off-season planning, we try to cover off as, as much as we can in terms of planning what are we going to do if, if injury happens or a player isn't at the level that we expect. Josh, so on defense, notably, I mean, we signed, uh, uh, we signed Jordy Ben and, uh, and Victor Mete in free agency. And we were very happy with how Carl Dahlstrom played last year, both with us and with the Marlies, and, and think he's capable of a lot more. And then we've got our own younger players that, that uh, showed very well. And one, you know, Philip Crawl and Traverse City, but last year with the Marlies, and he's taken great steps physically. And then, in addition to, uh, to Philip, we have Mac Hollowell that last year, I thought before he broke, he broke his hand in a fight at the end of the year, but before that was really pushing to, to be considered for time. So that's the answer um, on defense with, with um, the situation up front, what we have is, uh, you know, when, when the news of Pierre came in, that's when we executed the, uh, the tryout agreement for Zach Aston Reese, who we had really considered going into the offseason as well. But then, you, you know, you, it, this is the first time, I think, going into the year where I look at our own internal guys, uh, and, and if you're them today, you feel you've got a great chance. So whether you're Nick Robertson, who I know gets, gets a, a lot of bandwidth, but also the Bobby McMahons, Joey Andersons, Pontus Holmbergs, you know, all throughout the uh, all throughout the organization, it's a great chance and opportunity for them uh, to show that that they can they can push and, and give it a go. So we're really excited about that, and I'm excited to see them and what they can do starting uh, starting tomorrow on the ice. Kyle, how was the, your your contract situation or not getting an, an extension this summer? How was that communicated with you from Brendan and Shanahan as far as you know? This is the plan. Um, you know, there's no extension coming and, you know, we'll deal with it at, at some point. 
Uh, it was, you know, he obviously Brendan and I talk all the time and, and have uh, very open communication on it. And, and we met at, uh, at the end of the summer and, and just kind of went through the, the way that the year was going to go. And, and frankly, that's, that's what I expected. I expected that, you know, the, the reality is I, I'm fully acknowledged we haven't uh, gotten it done at, at the end of the season. So um, I would much rather be evaluated on the full term anyway. Um, so we, we just had a conversation about it and, and that was great. And I'm very happy to, to go through with how we're going through it. Hey, Kyle. Uh, how would you describe how you've changed since you've been in the job, improved, what, what your process has been? Oh, um, I think for me, Mark, we've, we've had a continual change in the, in the people we have, but I think every year you have to go through. There's some things that are your core principles that I, I think changing them would probably require you know, a, a much deeper investigation. I try to do that in the summer rather than during the year. Um, but I think you have to go, you look, you, you go, when you go back to 2018, when I um, took this position, you certainly are, are every single season trying to find ways that you can improve and, and do a better job in, in, dra in, in player acquisition, player development, and, uh, and then keeping your players as well. So th those are, I think, when it comes to the personnel side, those are the primary functions of the job. When it comes to all the other facets of the organization. I think the people that, that lead their individual departments, whether that's medical, um, whether that's equipment, whether it's high performance, player development, we've, we've made a, a lot of changes to those over the you know, four plus years that I've, I've been in this position. And that's sort of the, the quest always is, even if we think we're doing it well, well isn't good enough and we need to continue to, to push. So um, I, I never think that um, we ever have it close to figured out. And obviously our, our results show that we have a, a, a way to go in getting ourselves there. So um, we're, trying, we're just trying to improve in everything every single day and, and get better every day. Carl, can you expand a bit on the uh, Liljegren injury, uh, how it happened, and maybe uh, update on a Rodin Amaroff? Uh, sure. Uh, Lilligren uh, reported uh, some abdominal pain upon arrival and, and uh, on medical review was, uh, then an ultrasound was found that he had um, a hernia. So that was, uh, I, I did, you know, to me it's just a cumulative thing that, that happened. It wasn't an acute uh, situation where it happened, Lance. Uh, Rody and Amarov, we had a, a follow-up with, um, with, uh, with he and the, and the doctors that are managing it from Moscow and Germany. It's obviously become a more difficult situation to, to manage in person as, as things have developed um, in Europe. Uh, so where he's at is that he's through his final round of chemotherapy and, and um, what we're working on now is um, a consultation appointment with an immunologist to see if he's able to travel over here and be around the team to train and participate in, uh, in on-ice training and, and hopefully uh, return to, to play. So that's that's where we're at. One more, if you don't mind. Uh, what sort of a resource has Jason Spets have been so far for you? Um, Jason's been outstanding so far, more so because you know, he wants to learn everything. So he asks a lot of questions as someone who's transitioned right from playing to um, to management. And I, I think having someone of that, um, obviously the caliber of player, but the way that he thinks about the game and how interested he is in, in hockey in general, everything that goes into it has been uh, really valuable to us, you know, certainly through free agency, but also as we get ready to go into camp. Kyle, these may be obvious, but with uh, Matt Murray, can you be as certain as possible about his health right now, or will his play dictate that? And secondly, um, is he, again, maybe obvious, is he clear-cut number one, or do you have a workload planned for both your goalies, especially early on? Well, I think Matt, Matt has been, been fully cleared today and he's ready to roll. So that's, that's, uh, that's the answer to his health question. Um, and with regards to the, the workload for both goaltenders, I think both have shown that they can uh, carry the load, Mark. And, and we just, we're try the, the reality is we need to get them both up and running and it's going to be hard to do that if one is playing all the games and the other is sitting. And so I think the way the schedule is the beginning of the year kind of makes that uh, easy to, to, uh, to let it roll. But that said, it's, it's going to be based on merit. So um, how they play in, in exhibition, how they play to start the year, nothing has been promised to either and, and nothing will be given to either. They'll earn it. And we have Eric Shelgren here as well that, that will, will push and uh, as he did last year. So. It's, that, that'll be a, a key thing for, for us to watch in camp, but um, very confident in all three. Thank you. With 
Nathan McKinnon signed his extension yesterday. Public focus is obviously shifted to Austin's pending free agency coming up. You know, how much does that impact the way the team kind of plans, even though it's, you know, before you're able to sign that extension? Um, well, I would say he's, he's not pending. He's uh, we've got two years left on him, but um, I think for us, you're, you're always planning to, you're always planning to, um, you know, when you have good players, you're, you're immediately planning to keep them. And so, you know, a lot of what we do, if you look at the way that our contracts have been structured, has been, um, you know, we, we've got a massive amount of cap flexibility coming around that time when Austin, Mitch, William, and John all expire. So uh, that's that's really the job. We don't. We have very few players. We have two players that, that have contracts into into the term of those. So that planning isn't just a now thing. It's something that. Uh, that has been going on for you know from from the minute that they signed them because of the, the caliber of player they are. So I understand the question and it's fair, and I understand the discussion behind it. And that's you know where it's on us to build an environment where where high end players want to stay and and be here because they know they can be pushed to reach their potential and have a chance to win. So thanks. Hey Kyle. Uh, respect, of course, you don't want to talk about negotiations with Sandine, but I'm wondering in his situation how important you view training camp for a player of his age uh, to, to participate in as much of it as possible. Well, we've been through it before, and the, you know, with the player that missed training camp and missed um, you know, two months of the season, and we've, everyone in this room saw it, it's tough. And I think in, in Rasmus's case, He's a player that's still, he, he needs, the, this is pivotal development time. So I, I think it is very important. And, and like I said at, at the outset, we certainly wish he was here because I, I do think it has massive value. And, and we hope that uh, he's here as soon as possible. Kyle, two, uh, two seasons ago, you argued that uh, to set itself up to have success in the series, in the playoffs, the Leafs had to build on a season like the Lightning and the Bruins and dominate. That's what your team did last year, arguably having their best season ever. What can you say to fans that this season, even if they were to replicate that things could or might change? So just to, I, I kind of cut out a little bit, so just to clarify, the, the question is uh, we've, we've we put a lot of emphasis on the regular season like other, and reference other teams that have in the past and, and if we do that again this season, how would it be different? Just I, could, I couldn't hear that well. So my, my uh, answer to that would be, um, I thought we, we had a very good regular season, but we were still, there, I mean, I consider that a significant difference between us and the team that won our division in Florida. So to me, you know, there, there's still a lot of room for us to grow in that regard and push in that regard. Our, our goal has to be to win our division. That's where we compete most. And, uh, you know, I, I understand that that's not going to uh, placate anybody. Everyone's going to say, okay, that, if, if, if we were to do that and, and that is our goal, then it's going to immediately shift to, okay, let's get it done in, in the playoffs. And, and that's, that's how we're wired as well. We just view the, ex, the training camp exhibition and the regular season to, as a key to building what we're going to build as we go into the playoffs. And as I said in the opening, no one wants to hear us talk about it. They want to see us do, and, and that's that's and we know that as well. Hey, Kyle. Uh, just in regards to the uncertainty of your contract, uh, Austin coming up in a couple of years, and I think betting line has Sheldon as first coach to possibly get fired this year. Is this a make or break season? Is that how you're kind of viewing it for this team? What do you mean by make or break, Mike? If you don't get to where you want to get to, and I don't know if that's the second round, I don't know if that's the cup final, I don't know if that's winning the division, are you expecting big change with this organization? Well, I'll tell you first off, our goal is not to win one round and get to the second round. Our goal is to win four. Our goal is to win the Stanley Cup. So that's what we set our mind on every day, and there's no thought amongst anyone that works in this facility about anything less than that and what the repercussions are going to be and not be. So I don't spend any of my time worried about what the betting line says about Sheldon and, and uh, anything in that regard. And I only worry about every single day here, as I said in the opening, about what we can do every single day to be at our best to reach our goal, which is to win in the end. And um, so I think that's the best way I can answer that. 